good morning and welcome to the vlog. God, I look tired. Hold on. That's better. Welcome to the vlog. If you don't know me or you're new here, my name's Jade. I'm a writer, soon to be author, a book reviewer, booktuber, and serial procrastinator, and this vlog is going to be me having a to-do list of things to do because my book launches in two weeks. But I also really don't want this to just be a me doing things vlog. Well, I guess that's all vlogs. Wait, hold on. Let me rewrite that. I don't want this to be just me marketing my book. That's not really what my channel's about, and I don't want to make my channel about that. I'm not a marketing channel. As I said, I am a writer, I am a soon-to-be author, but that is not all that my channel is and not all that I want it to be. I also decided to pick up some books because I like reading. I have a lot to get done, but I don't want to just be a stress mess. I mean, a mess is fine, obviously, but the stress is the thing I'm most concerned about. I still want this to be fun and good and fun feel like I am enjoying my journey. There will be some stressful moments, I'm not gonna be unreal about it, but I do want to also just give myself the best chance I got, which does begin with a to-do list. First up, let's talk about my TBR and what I plan on reading in this video. My grand plan is to read four books in this video. I got two weeks, four books. If you watched my autumn TBR, I had a slew of really good books that I'm very excited about. These are the macabre and the dreary ones. I'm actually also about to go on vacation, more on that later, but these are the books where I can't really see reading these, relaxing and enjoying myself. So I want to get these done first. I kind of want to get my grief-ridden, dreary, gloomy, dark academia books out of the way and then move into a little bit more of an upbeat autumn TBR for my trip. TBR as it stands now. First, the dark academia book, A Study in Drowning. What I know so far is that an architect student goes to her favorite author's house after he passed away and she has been commissioned to reinstate, reinvigorate, renovate the house for the son and I guess the mother that still lives there. So far, terrible vibes as she goes into this house. And what I would say that I haven't said before when talking about what this book is about is she wanted to be in a literature course, but in this world, women can't actually be in literature courses. They are not supposed to write. So she had to take architecture because that was the only way she'd get into the college. So far, I'm liking it. I'm not loving it. It's a bit slow for me, but I'm liking it. Moving on, I'm also going to be listening to The Chateau. This is through my Libby app, so I'll be listening to it audibly. This is about a group of friends who used to go on vacation together to one of the friend's grandmother's mansion in the south of France. They decide to go there for like a final trip. I think the grandmother maybe invited them to this chateau, and then it turns into some sort of murder mystery when the grandmother dies. I've heard mixed results about this so far, but I'm this is going to actually be my more lighthearted read. Looking forward to this one. I think I'm just gonna go with into it without having any serious expectations. Then we have Lady Macbeth. Quite the opposite as far as expectations go for me. I have really high expectations. This is also an Ava Reed book. From what I'm understanding, it is a woman put into an arranged marriage and she is trying to survive that marriage by climbing to the top and making sure she is secure and safe. It is a reimagining of Macbeth, but I've heard that it's really far from the original. I'm just going into it as it being a new Ava Reed book and I'm not really going to think about like, like any Shakespearean analogies or anything like that. So if you're looking for someone to give an academic thought about this book, you're probably not gonna get it from me. Then finally, probably my most depressing book on this TBR, <laughs> welcome to fall guys, is Monstrilio. This is about a woman whose son dies. I actually read the first chapter of this just to kind of get a vibe of what I wanted to start with first. This is the most grief-ridden thing I think I've ever read. Uh, you, ugh. A woman's son dies and she takes a piece of his lung, nurtures that piece of lung until it turns into a little monster called Monstrilio that she then takes care of. The opening of this book was heart-wrenching. I think that this is the only time I'll ever be able to read this book in my life. I think once I had a child or was getting ready to have a child, even this far removed, it really messed with me. You are deep inside of this woman's grief and it was palpable. I felt it. I felt it a lot. For now, it's not the first book on my TBR. I definitely don't want to read it on my trip. But yes, okay, moving on to my trip. I am going on vacation. We are going to go see my partner's mother and not my partner's mother-in-law, that would be my mother. My mother-in-law, which is my partner's mother. <laughs> 
I'm gonna go visit my mother-in-law. <laughs> but my mother-in-law lives in the US, so I'm actually going to the US as well. This is all very exciting because the US means US books, which also unfortunately means US prices because I get paid in yen. So in preparation for that trip, I need to do an unhaul because I need to get rid of books on my shelves that I think would be not only something I'm not interested in, but worth money so that I can go to buy, sell trades and get the books I want because I just have to be so picky here. I'm really excited, but I'm also like, I'm a, I'm a little frazzled by it. I am also going on this trip the day my book comes out. On September 20th is the day that I fly out on an airplane. So I won't even be at all accessible for about eight hours. I might have a Virgo moon, but I am an Aquarius to my core. I did not plan this well. It wasn't all me. It had to do with her dates and when she was available as well. She can't make the trip here. It's a really long flight. There's lots of other factors. Point being, she's not coming here. We're going to her and it's going to be a really isolated trip where we're just spending time with her and I need to have everything ready for my book launch, my debut novel. Oh my god, sorry, it's setting in. I'm gonna make a to-do list. Next step in this vlog is making a to-do list and it's going to be the to-do list for this vlog. What I accomplish in this vlog will be the things on that list. Yeah, okay, the, the coffee's kicking in. Caffeine is caffeinating. I'm gonna go ahead and get really nice stationery because that's going to help me. sheet of paper. That took longer than I was expecting, but I'm expecting everything on this list to take longer than I'm expecting because time management, oh boy, not my forte, but we're gonna do it anyway. I actually don't really have a choice. I mean, I have a choice in the fact that I could just give up and go home and be like, I kind of released a book. I'd rather not. I'm gonna try my best. I'm going to do my absolute best. I just thought of another thing I need to add to this list. I have a feeling that's going to happen a lot, but as long as I'm checking things off of this list, I'm gonna feel okay at the end of this. We have make short form content times 10. That is the thing I'm dreading most. It's also the first on my list. I have fun creating the concepts for it. Doing it just feels unsatisfying every single time I'm done. I just, I don't like having to think about the algorithm very much, but I definitely need to for these. Otherwise, I'm doing something I dislike for no purpose. Next, unhaul books. Pack for trip. I'm going to a tropical location that I don't want to commercialize going to. Like, I don't advocate for it, but it's where my mother-in-law is. I am visiting her, but I don't want to prepare perpetuate tourism there. Guessing you can probably guess where it is if it's in the United States. I'm like, don't go there. Tourism. The best I can do is just not like make heavy commercialization of it, but I do need to pack for it. Edit TBR. I realized I mentioned my TBR earlier and was like, you haven't edited that. They might not have seen that because have you done it? No, not yet. Make newsletter and look up how to make a newsletter because I've never had a newsletter before and I don't even really subscribe to newsletters. I'll link it down below if you're interested in it. We're going to be growing together. I can promise content content in my newsletter. I'm working on quality. That's my, that's my pitch. Email 20 bookstores. If I could put that one, not even at the top of my list, if I could just take it off of my list, I would, but I need to do it. I want my books to be in bookstores. You can order it from any bookstore, but I would like the bookstores to carry them independently of people requesting them, and that takes work on my end. If you go to a bookstore and request my book, they can order it for you, but I would like you to walk amongst the shelves and see my book spontaneously. This is an ongoing list, but 20 before the release, but I'll continue to push out these emails, so I need to get better at them because I have to write a lot of them. If you haven't gotten yourself a coffee, if you haven't really realized how long this vlog is gonna be, check the timestamps, care for yourself. Also, maybe grab that coffee, maybe grab a snack. I think that this is going to be a long vlog, and I don't think I'm going to cut it too much because I do want to be able to reflect back on it for myself and be like, holy crap, you did all these things? Back to doing things. Sign up for collaborations and or giveaways. I've seen lots of giveaways where lots of authors get together and they do collaborations to promote and sell each other's books. I feel like that is a fun way to do marketing for, so that I can be promoting other people's books, so I can promote my books, connect with other authors. I feel kind of isolated as far as like author connections go. It's been hard. Harder than doing booktube. Like the booktube community, I've already in several of the people, like new booktubers I've found, commenting back to me and like I feel like I'm already building a rapport with them and it's so fun and so exciting. I haven't felt that as much so with author too. 
I have made a few connections and I feel really good about them. Overall, I, I do feel like I have, I don't wanna say try a lot more because you should always just try with connections, but I'm feeling like I'm trying more. <laughs> do Discord giveaway. I have a Discord for my street team. They have been fantastic. Thank you so much for all of the uploads and the shares and the encouragement. I've been setting up giveaways on my Discord and trying to make it like gamified for helping me. The first Discord giveaway we're doing is the art Discord for my cover artist. Little Liz Art, I'll have her linked down below. They can either make original art or they can like and follow Little Liz Art and I need to do the raffle winner for that. Format deleted scene. I have to use Atticus and I hate Atticus. That's my formatting software. I might do a video in the future about Atticus, but I have a deleted scene that I'm going to be giving out in my first newsletter, but I'd like it to look nice and be like an EPUB thing that they download. It's just a small scene, but it's like, it's deleted. You'll be the only ones with it. We've moved on to the TBR. Read a study in drowning. Read Monstrilio. Read Lady Macbeth. Read the Chateau. Edit this video. I would have forgotten. <sighs> Not looking forward to that, but that's not me. That's me of the future. I cannot tell you how disconnected I am from that person. I would like to have more relaxing, like collective mindfulness walks for myself during this. I won't be writing very much in this vlog, if at all. I don't really have time to write right now, but I'd still like to soft write, which is where I'm like thinking deeply about book two and like what I'd like to do. If you haven't heard of the term soft writing, I really like it. It's how I started originally writing. I thought about stories all the way to their conclusion. I would imagine entire things but it's storytelling and I was telling myself stories and now I put them on paper, but I don't have time to do that right now. Uh, and then the final thing uh, I added to my list was to rate my book. I'm a firm believer in rating your own book and I absolutely tried my best with this book. I enjoy reading my book because I actually really love the story and I really love the characters. This was my oasis. This was my escape from my reality and I will never not be able to go back in there. It's time to actually start doing these things. I should make short form content. Let's get awkward and put on pants uh cuz i'm i'm not wearing pants <laughs> because I don't want to damage my first edition of my book. You're doing good flops here, Kaz. Okay, I have to make like nine more of these, so. Hello, okay, so I just finished chapter six of A Study in Drowning and I am locked in. I'm ready, I'm, I'm in it, I'm enjoying myself. It did take about this long to get there, like before I was just kind of like reading it and enjoying like the prose and the atmosphere. After chapter six, like I did, I, I felt it. I was not really feeling the academic rivals to lovers um, at first. It's working now and I, I can't pinpoint exactly what's changed without giving away spoilers. I'm also enjoying the story a lot more. I kind of understand the character's motivations. Kind of didn't know what was happening. I was just following this random girl who was taking pink pills and had a bad relationship with her mother and I was like where am I but now I know where I am I'm on dangerous treacherous ocean facing cliffs um in a dilapidated house with really unnerving vibes and really unnerving characters and like this isn't a horror book it's not like a haunted house there's definitely like an essence in this that just I'm feeling off put in like not a bad way in like a Ava Reed making you feel uncomfortable so that she can unpack that later kind of way I will say though there is a content warning for Trauma, dealing with sexual assault. This character uh, is going through it and she is unpacking things as well around that issue. So that has been in there. I don't feel like it's done in a really like heavy or like made into a spectacle at all. It's just built into her story and what she's going through. It's really beautifully written as far as like relatability goes. The world feels very lived in, but it also feels lived in by them. And I wasn't fully grasping what the world was. And I think that it is purpose vague as far as info dumping or exposition goes they're just very much so in this world and you get to explore it specifically through their lens of people who already live there and are not going to hold your hand which is something I actually prefer in novels but it can be a little difficult at first because you're not getting handheld you're doing it all by yourself but uh yeah that's my update there and I'll check in with you tomorrow I'm also getting tired no more 4am vlogging <laughs> 
Welcome to Sunday. I have not had caffeine yet. I'm having water this morning and I've been chugging away really at emails. I've only done three. These are really hard because they're personalized. They're personalized to the bookstores. And I'm not gonna call out the bookstores because if I get like rejections or they don't answer, I don't wanna throw shade their way. Bookstores have to make a living as well. So I'm just going to be trying my best. They're gonna try theirs. And hopefully some of these bookstores will meet in the middle. I haven't had caffeine because I plan on making chai later, but uh, that's my reward reward for finishing these emails. Now I'm thinking I'm going to uh, change up my reward, be kind to myself. Free feels good for day two of this journey. And so I'm going to go ahead and make some chai and then get back to my computer to do some editing on my TBR vlog because I want that out. I want to have like consecutive weeks posting so that the YouTube algorithm doesn't hate me, doesn't punish me right before my book launch. I'm going to go ahead and send this email, make some chai, and then we're going to sit down and we're going to edit the TBR video that you have definitely already seen. If not, I'll link it down below. I'm terrible at putting the little cards up and I noticed that people don't click on them. Do you click on the cards? I never do because I don't want to leave the video I'm currently watching. I'd rather look in the description box for them. I don't know. You tell me. Do you ever do it? Is it ever done? I can tell I haven't caffeinated yet. <laughs> My shelves already look picked at because I have already picked them out and now I'm just going to be telling them to you and then I'm going to shove them in my suitcase and see if they fit. I have this in white, two skirts, a pair of pajamas that could only be worn in a tropical location, a night dress just in case my mother-in-law wants to go to like a nice restaurant so I don't embarrass her, and then two bikinis. That's it. That's all I'm bringing. As far as not books. <laughs> and charging you because you're dying. Why do you always have to die? Okay, welcome back. You didn't miss anything. I got a second cup of chai. All right, so these are the books I'm going to be getting rid of. I'll briefly say why, but it's not going to be very in-depth. The point is, is that I'm trying to get buy, sell, trade money to get books I'm really heavily interested or have already read. The first one is the Walmart edition of House of Flame and Shadow. This series for me got worse and worse as it went. I've, I really actually liked the first book. And then the second one felt messy like spaghetti, but I enjoyed it. It. This one, I didn't like. The parts that I was looking forward to, it seemed like other people weren't, and I don't know if she was listening to the people or what, but the whole point was, this was just poorly written for me. And the reason why I got the Walmart edition, because of the bonus material in the back, I read the bonus material, it was lackluster in my opinion. Overall, just very unhappy with this book, and that's a lot of shelf space, especially since I had it tilted out this way, in order for people to not ask me about it, so I didn't have to give this opinion. Next book is to Cage a God by Elizabeth May. This is the Illumicrate edition. It's really pretty and I'm hoping it sells for a pretty penny. Oh wow, the inside. I've actually heard really good things about this one. I just don't think I'm going to get to it anytime soon. It hasn't grasped my interest, so it's going into the suitcase. I read A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. Illumicrate edition, signed by the author. There's lots of people who really love Rebecca Ross and really love this book. I would like to put it back out into the world. I don't need to keep this Next, these are so gorgeous and I just don't need them. I'm not like a super fan of Leigh Bardugo. I am a fan of hers, but I'm not an in-depth fan and this is like in-depth fan stuff. So we have this special edition of The Lives of Saints. I have read this. I consumed the beautiful stories that are in it. Like I would recommend this book. If you are a Leigh Bardugo fan, this is a gorgeous edition. It has all of the different like short stories of the saints. The next one is a language of thorns from the Grishaverse. I have 
also read all of these. They're short tales. Again, gorgeous illustrations that slowly build up in the book. I, I absolutely love it. I can even see me using this. I have some short stories I want to tell within my world, but I don't need this edition to do that because I have such limited shelf space and it's so expensive to get books here that I really need to have a strong clinging desire to either read them or keep them. So this one is going to go to hopefully someone who really loves Lee Bardugo. The Jassad Air, this is the Illuminate edition. I was excited for it because I'd seen a lot of good things about it. The writing style felt really clunky to me in the beginning. I just felt like it was a lot of passive writing and I just didn't have enough interest in it to keep it. The sprayed edges on this one are freaking gorgeous. I hope that the bookseller I try and sell it to feels the same. Then we have Saw Kill Girls. Absolutely loved Saw Kill Girls. Like, uh, this is one of the first times I had ace representation. There was a bi teenage girl that in scene you have romance and exploration. That was really exciting for me. When I first read this, I absolutely loved it. I don't get the same things out of it now and I'm going to put it back out into the world so that a teenager or someone who who hasn't read this book or hasn't had those experiences can experience that. Then we have We Free the Stars. This is one of my all-time favorite series. I just need to have it in hardcover. It is going on the wish list for books I'm going to be looking for because I want the matching set in hardcover. I love this series. Then I just have three Japanese books that are N4 and N5. I'm working towards N3, so I don't need these anymore. And I feel like textbooks on learning Japanese would do better in the US than in Japan. Now, for the grand question of, are these going to get messed up? <laughs> We're packed. Oh, reading update for the Chateau. I did start it, I'm about 15% of the way through, and I don't especially care about the characters or the story right now. It's holding it my attention and it's going fast, but it feels precarious. I feel like I could DNF this, but I also don't dislike it enough, don't care enough to do that quite yet. Right now it's just like good filter stuff for in the background as I go about my life. We have arrived at the Chateau, the mansion. There's a character named Jade, which literally that I usually can't do it, but this feels like so low intention for me that I, I'm fine. I don't know if anyone else has that with their name, but I guess I just don't hear my name often enough for me to be used to it. Coming across the name Jade over and over again and it being an entire POV and also having some tendencies that are similar to mine. If she turns out to be the murderer, that's not one of the tendencies. It's a little unnerving. However, we've been given the catalyst of there being like a stalker type picture being taken. They didn't really seem to care though. All the characters have been introduced and they all seem sus in their own respect. So they all could have killed the grandma who hasn't died yet. The, the intention based off of all of their motivations is that, you know, one of them wants to kill the grandma. <laughs> Only one of them would inherit though, so I don't know. One of the characters actually is French. She's definitely the most chill and I like her the most, which means she might be the murderer. That would be something. Looking forward to that. Sorry, I'm so bored by this book that I got distracted by a cloud outside. Uh, yeah. Welcome to Wednesday. I have not updated you, I don't think, since this weekend. It's been very, very busy at work, and we're getting ready for tests, and I am getting ready to go on my trip during test week, which is when they won't need me, but they'll need me as soon as I get back, and they'll need me all the way up until I leave, so I've, I've been tired. But my schedule today was light because it was just a PE day. I didn't have a lot of, like, other things that I need to do as far as work, so I also got to do to-do list stuff. So, gosh, what all of I done? Let me look at my list. Ah, right. Okay. First off, I found a Stuff My Kindle that was going on and I signed up for it. I'm hoping, unless I do something wrong, this is my first Stuff My Kindle, so I might do something wrong, but I'm part of the Stuff Your Kindle fantasy promotion. I'm in the cozy section of the Stuff Your Kindle sale and it's going to be going on October 18th to the 20th and I believe that's EST. I was also able to connect with an Instagrammer named Missy. Her at is Cress the Book Dragon. I'll have her link down below, but I'm hopefully going to be doing a collaboration with her. She seems like she does them fairly often and is aware that I'm new at it, which is nice. And then I sent off more emails. I'm at 10 emails now, so I'm halfway through the emailing shenanigans as far as emailing bookstores. And I found a newsletter site that I think is going to work for me specifically because it had a 30 day free trial and that's Beehive. So I looked into a lot of different ones and as far as like being able to like uphold a monthly budget, it's going to be difficult for me because 
I only send out four newsletters a year. I send out seasonal ones on the equinox and solstices to kind of like catch up on what I'm doing. So I needed something I could kind of like start and stop and I needed a easy user interface. So far Beehive looks like that's what it is. It seems well regarded. I looked up a lot of videos on it. I've begun structuring the newsletter but I haven't actually written the newsletter. I really wanted to like sit down and like you know put forth the effort and have some time to just think about all of the things I wanted to put in there and if I could do it. But I'm gonna start putting that together. Also need to edit exclusive content for the newsletter subscribers so the people subscribed to my newsletter get a deleted scene, an update from me, what's gonna be happening next, and then they also get a link to unlisted videos, me talking more about book two and what I plan on doing, first looks, in-depth information on book one and where I got some of the ideas, all of the characters, astrology charts, original concepts, you know, things like that. This is green tea, by the way. I'm drinking green tea today. That's the caffeination of choice. I guess I'm just telling you what I'm doing today and what I've done so far. No, this is this is successful. I, I'm I'm successful. Oh, before I write my newsletter, I finished A Study in Drowning. I loved this book. I feel like it was a four star up until about the 50% mark, but when it hit that 50, it skyrocketed straight into the five star category. I don't think it's gonna be for everyone, but if you like a slow build of dark gloom in your dark academia with a strong stance on feminism and taking action and agency over your life, then I think that this would be a good book for you. I think I'm going to settle on because the first half was a four, the second half was a very strong five. I'm going to go with a very strong four. So like 4.5, 4.8, 4.9. Beginning was a little slow for me and I wasn't connected to the character. I know I mentioned the academic rivals uh, thing being a little bit like silly and frivolous and I still do stand by that, but I really did end up shipping these characters together and I felt really strongly by the end. I, I, I felt the worry for the characters and them and wanting them to be together and wanting everything to be okay and it was like a very strong ending. I don't want to get into it because I don't want to get into spoilers but it was just it was a really good book to read right now especially if you are an author aspiring author or if anyone's ever told you you aren't a writer or to not believe in yourself. I feel like this was a really good book for that as well and I finished it. Oh my gosh I can check it off the list. I'm not gonna do like the sexy little cutaway because I actually do have to start writing this newsletter. But while I'm here, I can also get sign up for collabs finished. We have been going on daily walks, but I need to get this newsletter done. This is, this is the big thing that's looming over me right now. Why am I still at this angle? I have been posting, so hopefully you've been seeing content from me on the daily. I hope it's also not annoying and you didn't unsubscribe from me. It won't always be like this, but it has been getting really good reception, which is exciting. Don't know if it'll translate into sales. It's exciting to see so many people interacting with the posts. It gives me encouragement to get all of these out. And while I can't say I really enjoy short form content, my long form content's obviously a bit janky as well. I am enjoying interacting with people and getting clearly overt support, which has been really nice. Okay, you're just, you're losing my eyes. I'm gonna go ahead and write this newsletter. Let's go. rough draft feels really good. I'm definitely going to look it over again before I send it out to people or schedule to send it out to people. I'm going to go ahead and edit the, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start editing so that I can just get that checked off the list and out of the way. And then I'll check back in with you at some point. <laughs> is officially meta because I am editing this content while also making more of it. Today is Saturday and I've been editing this vlog as well as doing some like front loading before my trip. Essentially doing two weeks work because this week's work is really heavy before the tests. I feel like I'm doing two weeks work in one as well as launching a book and I am 
I am tired. I can feel it. I also feel like maybe this is affecting my score, but I really don't think so. I finished the Chateau. I want to give this two stars, and I'm trying to think of what that second star is for. It was messy. It was messy. It was convoluted. It didn't make sense. When I said I didn't understand why a couple of the characters were there, I literally mean they could have been taken out. I don't even know if anyone needed to die here today. <laughs> Did anyone need to die? Did any of this really need to happen? I, I went in with low expectations, and and I was having fun. By the end, I was I was pretty fed up. I liked that the women were all in their 40s outside of the absurdity. They were dealing with like actual issues that women have at this age. And I especially kind of liked Vixen's point of view. She'd had to have breast surgery because of cancer. She had noticed small changes in how her friends were talking about her. She used to be a very voluptuous woman, but now, you know, like they just weren't mentioning her body at all. And they used to call her Vixen. I guess her name is Victoria or Vicky, but they call her Vixen. And they stopped calling her Vixen, which she thought was like really unfair. And I thought that that was interesting. Is it worth a second star? I don't know. There was a Van Gogh sequence that just didn't make any sense. I'll give it a 1.5. So um, yeah, that was the Chateau. I can check it off my list. Okay, some time has passed and uh, I went for a walk, finished editing the video. So you're all caught up now. I think I also cooled down. It was really hot and I decided, my friend reached out to me and and she asked if I wanted to have a writing date with her tomorrow and at first I was like I need to edit I need to read these books I need to get my book ready I said I wasn't going to write because I just need to focus on book one it sounded so nice on my walk I realized that I was feeling drained marketing is not my forte I don't feel like rejuvenated or excited I'm draining myself I'm taking my energy away I think that I do need a little bit of a reset day to just have a nice autumnal day writing. Tomorrow I'm going to have a down day where I go out and I write with my friend and I just don't think about marketing. I don't think about the book launch which is starting to make me nervous for sure. I feel like I haven't had one of those in a while where it didn't have like some sort of set purpose. This is not to say I'm not incredibly excited for my book to come out. I know it might come off that way. I'm just so jittery with nerves. I, I know that it's coming off as possibly like negative energy and it's just me feeling a lot of of self-doubt. I'm really excited. I can't wait to have it in the hands of readers that will connect with it and love Kezra and Dar and Ambrose and maybe even Rorik. There's got to be someone out there. When I'm doing the marketing aspect, it, it takes that part away from it. I'm not thinking about my readers. I'm thinking about how to get the word out there, what I can do algorithm-wise to try and bump it so that it does get to those readers. How many emails can I write? How can I pitch it to a bookstore? It's a lot and it makes me feel far removed from the thing I'm trying to talk about. So I don't want anyone to think that I'm not incredibly excited because I really, really am. I can't wait to be on vacation and just know my book is out in the world. To just sit on a beach and be like, oh my gosh, someone might be getting their copy of the Solstice Court is amazing. If there's anything I would ask of anyone, it wouldn't be to buy the book. I mean, by all means, like that's amazing. That's lovely. That's wonderful. I already have gotten so many messages about people who have bought the book, but if you just want a way of like supporting me or if you see me melting down and you're like, can, can I help? It would just be requested at libraries, get the word out there, mention it, reshare, repost. It's one less email I have to send to a bookstore if you pick it up in person or let them know that it exists. Not just for me, for the people that would actually get to read the book and really connect with it. I love this book. I'm really proud of it and I'm very excited for it. So I guess that's my call to action, but I've had enough action for the day. I'm gonna go decompress, have some dinner, and have kind of a writing day. I probably won't check in too much tomorrow just because I want to be like present with my friend. Sorry for the little meltdown. I have to make this update so fast because I'm running out the door and I'm already running late. So uh, this is my outfit. Take my hair down. This is just for the bike ride. And then uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you.
lunch all days could just be cafes and writing and too many pancakes and macabre books. Alas, that's not my reality, but it was a really nice day. It was exactly what I needed. It just filled me up. It filled my cup. And oh my gosh, those pancakes were delicious. I originally had in the back of my head that while I didn't put it on this list, I still need to film another video to go out on Monday, tomorrow, before this video because I needed to have a video for content for the algorithm because, you know, the algorithm. I'm not doing that. I'm going to just put this book, I'm going to put this book out. I'm going to put this book out and this video out on the same day. This book, this video, same day. I couldn't create more content. I thought about it when I got back. As soon as I was done writing and having my reset day, it entered my mind, but I'm clear headed now. And I said, no, there's not going to be more content. There's just going to be this and that's going to be okay. Hello, hello, and welcome to Tuesday. I just did like some test makeup because I'm trying to figure out what I want my look to be for when I'm like announcing the solstice court and, I, and it took it took some time. So that wasn't on my to-do list, but it became incredibly nerve wracking to realize that I was going to have to like wear clothes and dress up and be like, hey, look at my book. I, I had my regular post, but I didn't think of doing a video with me in the post, but I think that that is a good idea. I've also decided tomorrow I'm closing out this vlog. I don't have the energy to give a good closing bit right now just because I've been like kind of in my head about it. I have the makeup on but it's just gonna have to wait till tomorrow. Uh what was I gonna say? Oh Ava Reed. My dreary girl. She really has been bringing it this vlog. I'm now 30% of the way through Lady Macbeth and I'm so glad I waited until I was done with the other two books to get this one started. There's a lot as far as like the names go. It's a little overwhelming to read but I am enjoying it. It's beautifully written. I'm really getting an idea of the character at this point. I think she's a very complex character. I'm not agreeing with everything she's doing, but I'm understanding her motivations and it just makes her so compelling. We also just had a really good scene that's kind of like kicking things off at the 30% mark. She's been doing things this entire time. You're just kind of thrown into the setting and then she just starts the plot. She has an agenda and she is completing it, which I relate to. I've had an agenda this entire vlog and I have been completing it. Only thing on my to-do list that I have yet to do. I did not finish Monstrilio. I started Monstrilio, but I set it down and I'm going to go ahead and renew the loan after I get back from vacation and I'll go ahead and read Monstrilio, I think in October or November. It was not the right headspace and I'm so glad that I set it down when I did. It was so much. I still think it was beautifully written and it was impacting me immediately. If you're looking for a book to cry, I think Monstrilio might be the one. Do Discord giveaway. I'm going to be doing that actually tomorrow. I have a night class tomorrow and so it'll be off screen. So I'm going to do that in the evening when I have time uh, during my night class and once I know that this vlog is finished. I don't want to mess things up because it has to do with like, you know, raffle and shipping and making sure I'm doing everything right. Rate my book. It will be rated. I'm going to leave this checklist up specifically so that I can check it off on the day. But just know when you see me all dolled up and this video is ending, I will have rated my book. <laughs> By the way, I'm going to go ahead and give it five stars. Uh, a for effort. If you like the book I like. If you have a similar reading taste to me, I think you could pick up The Solstice Court and really enjoy it. It's a cozy political fantasy with a princess who is being told that she must stay neutral while a war battles on either side of her borders, which is easy for her until both of the princes from that war come to her court and she's going to have to figure out if neutrality is possible or if it's simply an ideal. I really enjoy Kezra as a character. She's a little whimsical, a little cattywampus. She's got some spice to her. She's exploring herself and exploring other people and she's just a curious little bean that I really enjoy. She's not always going to make the decision you think is the most practical but she's going to always make an interesting story and it's why she's my main character. There's found family and queer platonic friendships that are at the core story. At its core it's about love and friendship and togetherness and understanding. I hope you enjoy it if you pick it up. Obviously all the links down below. Let's go ahead and go to Celebratory Jade who's had a lot more caffeine and has her makeup just exactly how she wants it. Happy Autumn Equinox. If you're watching this, yeesh, that sounds like a final letter or like a last will and testament. Happy release day to the Solstice Court. If you're watching this, that means that it is out in the world. You can buy the Solstice Court right now. You can buy it, you can download it legally via Kindle. You can order it at your local bookstore or request that your library stock it. I just have to say, 
Thank you for all the support and patience I have gotten throughout all of this. I know that I am a booktube channel that sometimes occasionally does writing and Japan content. You didn't sign up for a marketing gig and I have tried my best to toe that line because I didn't sign up for it either until I decided to publish a book and I didn't read the fine print. But I am really, really grateful for all of the support I've gotten. I could not have asked for more. There has been so much effort and support and sharing and encouragement from all of you and I have felt every last bit of it. It has really gotten me through all of this and made me feel confident to make mistakes as I went along because it's actually really hard to do. As it turns out, it's kind of hard to publish a book. If you've made it this far into the video, leave a caffeinated beverage emoji of your choice because I have to give a shout out to caffeine and some forced small exercises to keep my lethargic and procrastinating mind sharp as I made it through this vlog. I made it through this vlog. I did this. If you're seeing this, I did this. I'm sorry. It's still overwhelming to me. I haven't quite figured it out yet. The fact that I'm filming this means that my book is out in the world. I can't even be coherent. I, I really, it's such an amazing feeling. If you're thinking of writing or publishing a book, I promise you, you can. But whether you're writing a book or not, I hope you're enjoying the sun or more stars wherever you are. And until next time, bye! Sorry, I'm. I just wanted to catch me crying just once because I'm. I'm. I'm making my shorts for the release day and I look ridiculous and I'm excited and jumping around and dancing because I wrote a book. <laughs> oh my God! What's happening to me?